Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about motion blur. Motion blur is an essential part of After Effects, and it's the essential part of pulling off a lot of different effects. Because in real life, when you're filming with a camera that takes, you know, 30 different pictures every second, 30 frames a second, when it does that, things move in between the shutter opening up and the shutter closing, and that's what causes motion blur. So a lot of times, films add in motion blur because it looks more cinema cinematic, and our eyes actually do have a little bit of motion blur in it as well, so adding a little bit to the movie makes things just a little bit more enjoyable for people. When it's too crisp and clear, it can get a little, I don't know, just uncomfortable. However, when you're adding in effects into After Effects, using motion blur is extremely important because motion blur re-adds that blur to it and makes it look like it was actually a part of the scene, which is nine times out of 10, what you're trying to do. Or you can make, give things like an aesthetic appeal, like I'll show you in a second. So for example, let's just get into it right now. We have a, a piece of footage here and you know, there's just a little piece of text slides in here. And you'll notice when you watch this, that it's kind of, it just doesn't look good. I mean, that's the only way to say it is it just doesn't look good when you have it slide in. And this is a really, really quick and simple fix. Um, After Effects has it built in and it's really, really simple to do. All you have to do is go into toggle switches and modes to make sure you're on all of these little boxes right here. Then you're going to select the piece of footage that you want motion blur added to, and then go up here and select enable motion blur. And now just like that, you have motion blur. You can already see that this is looking really, really neat. Now it, it slides in and it looks natural. It looks, um, I don't know, aesthetically appealing. You can also do something like, uh, for example, if I wanted to take this piece of footage and I can go down here in the transform and just set some markers. I wanted to, you know, do a weird quick zoom here, not position. I want, I want scale here. So we want to go scale and we want to go from here to this. Yeah. Okay. That's what we want to do. So we want them to kind of like come in and at the same time. And you'll notice if we undo the motion blur, watch this now. It's very minute, but you can feel it. Is the edges aren't blurring whenever you click the button. Um, and that, it throws you off. So if you just add a little bit of motion blur to fake camera pans and stuff like that, you can actually add some really neat things. And you'll see the motion as it's like it's zooming forward. And it creates this really neat motion blur happening. Now, you can also get a little bit creative with your motion blur. If you go into composition, composition settings, you can go into the advanced tab right here. And then down here, you have motion blur settings. Now, this is for re trying to recreate basically how you shot it on the shutter angle, the shutter face, stuff like that. However, you can kind of look at it at a, a little bit more of a artistic thing, like an artistic view. So if we just cancel out of this so I can get to a point where we see the, so we see traveling coming in right here. So if we go back into that composition settings, go into advanced, we can actually increase the angle and that's going to increase the blur. Just basically that's what it does. The higher the angle, the higher the blur, the more intense the motion blur. Now, if we set the shutter phase, what that's gonna do is it's gonna favor one end over the other. So you'll see this, if I set it up to really high, so let's, let's go for example, like 720 over here and then like 117 right here. And now you have this cool effect going where it's almost like you have a lead. So like a bullet might look where you have a solid object and then kind of the blur behind it. Now traveling kind of has that where the traveling part reaches it um, before the rest of it gets there. And it almost, it has this really neat smooth element to it. You see everything is like really smooth coming in now. And so that's a really important thing is to understand that you have control over your motion blur and that you can add smoothness or remove smoothness depending on how the scene works. You can also use this in like 3D comps. So I just have a bunch of videos all laid out randomly in Z space here. And if we don't have motion blur on, you'll see it's not checked here. As the video goes through, it looks, man, it just doesn't look very good. Um, it looks amateur. Now, if we just click this button right here, add the motion blur, it looks so much more smooth, so much smoother. Um, and that's what's really important is understanding that adding motion blur to anything will just make it so much better. And then we can actually go back into our composition settings, our advanced, and have some fun with this as well. We'll do the exact same thing, the 720. I haven't even 
tested what this looks like by 117. And now you can see how in the other one it worked, but in this one it doesn't really work because we got a lot of just not being able to see what's going on. So, you know, we can go in there and edit that down. But the main point of the video is understanding motion blur and how it works in After Effects. It's a really simple button. Always use it whenever you're adding things, unless, you know, like you really think it looks better without motion blur in that instance. Adding motion blur will take all of your After Effects stuff to the next level, and it's just one of those building blocks that helps you start learning the program. Thanks everyone for joining me for this simple yet quick tutorial. Um, if you want to see more Adobe-related content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or you know comments or you want to suggest maybe future tutorials, throw those in the comments below. And until next time, guys, see ya.